Now that we have established that we have a proper data set in Excel, let's start exploring what we have. We'll try to ask questions like, what happened in week two? What was all the money spent on beer? Where did VJ spend money on? What was the largest amount we spent in a particular transaction? And questions of similar nature. All these questions can be easily answered by using Excel's auto filter function. There are two ways to turn on filters in Excel. One way is in the home ribbon. In the home ribbon, you go to the editing portion and under the editing portion, you choose sort and filter and click on filter here. That's way one. Or you can go to the data ribbon in the data ribbon, you go to the sort and filter portion, and then you click on filter. If you open up an Excel file where there's a data set and you see these small drop down triangles, then you know that the data sets filter is turned on. To see if any of the filters are actually specifically activated or not, you need to look at it further. Let's say we want to add a filter here. I want to look at what happened in week three. Then I go ahead and click on the drop down triangle under when. And as you can see, I see a list of all the weeks. Right now, they're all being shown. I unselect everything, choose week three, and hit OK. This shows me all the transactions that took place in week three. And by the way, when you open up a data set in Excel and you see this little funnel next to one of the filters, you know that the data has been filtered using the when attribute this time. Let's go ahead and turn off the filters, which will give me my original data set back. And again, when I click on it again, I will get my filters. Now let's look at what VJ spent. I click on the drop down menu next to who, I unselect everything, and I click on VJ. I see that VJ spent money on several items. Let's, uh, let's actually look at the transactions that were made by VJ in only week four, which means we're going to add another layer of filter. So I will have the VJ filter in place, and then I go to when, and I select week four. Now I see the transactions that were made by VJ in week four. Again, let's remove our filters and turn on the filters again. Excel also will let you do custom filtering. For example, if you look at the how much filter here and go to the number filters, you have some interesting options like the numbers are equaling a certain value or greater than a certain value, the top 10, etc. If you go to custom filter, Excel will let you build specific filters, which may come in handy depending on your business case. One interesting feature of Excel 2013 is if you have a date field, here we don't have one, you actually get interesting filtering options like, oh, what happened in the last week or what happened in the last month? And again, this may come in handy depending on what type of business setting you're dealing with. Now, how do you think we could use the filtering function of Excel, the auto filter function of Excel to cleanse the data? Now, let's say in one of these weeks in transaction 14, let's say, instead of entering week three, the person who was doing the entry accidentally typed 333. Clearly, since this is a very small data set, I can quickly see that there is a problem here and go ahead and try to figure out what's going on and fix it. But what if I had 10,000 rows, 20,000 rows, which is highly likely at this day and age where we have so much data coming in through different sources. In that case, how can you spot this using the filter function? Well, when I open up a data set in Excel, I add a filter to the data set and I look at each attribute one by one. Here, if I look at the when attribute, the when column, I will see that I have one, two, three, four, and then there's a sudden jump to 333. 
Now, if there is a legitimate expenditure that was done in week 333, then this is not a problem. But with this data set, I know that this is March expenditures and there should be only four weeks. So this clearly is a problem. So I go ahead and try to choose the problem records. This could be more than one. In this case, there is only one. Then I say, well, this is not a correct entry. What should I do here? Was it a three? Was it a four? Was it a two? You may do some investigation and find the right value and replace it. In this case, I know that it was a three, so I'm going to go ahead and make it at three. And then when I go back to my filters, as you can see now, that option of 333 is gone. So you can see how this could come in very handy when you're trying to figure out problematic fields. Or let's say in record eight, I forgot to enter what the money was spent on. Then when I go to the what attribute and look at the filter, I see this blanks option, which means, well, I have beer entries, car entries, and food entries, but there are some blank entries as well, which again tells me that there might be a problem here. And I go ahead and try to get, well, what happened in these blank entries? Should they be filled? Should they not be filled? Now let's go back to the filter that we had before. Uh, we will use VJ. We will choose week four. Let's say somebody came up to me and said, you know, I really would like to know how much money was spent by VJ in week four. So you may say, well, I have all these five figures. Let me go ahead and sum them. And that should give me the answer. Before we hit enter here, let's take a look at this formula. Although sum is the first thing that comes to our mind to intuitively answer this question, if you look at the formula, it says sum of D6 through D21. Although I only see five rows between D6 and D21, let's see if Excel is going to sum only these five numbers or all rows from D6 through D21. And when you look at the number, it's clearly not just the sum of these five numbers here, it is everything between D6 and D21. This brings us to a very important issue. When you're dealing with filtered data sets in Excel and you're trying to apply some basic Excel functions on the filtered data set, such as sum, average, max, or min, standard deviation, you cannot use the regular Excel functions. What you need to do is use a new Excel function called subtotal. In subtotal, you need two arguments. The first argument is going to be a number, a function number. For example, if you want to take the average of these five numbers, you choose one. If you want to find the maximum of these five numbers, you choose four. Here we want a summation, so we're going to choose nine. Then you choose the range over which you would like to subtotal, then hit enter. Now, before we hit enter, I want to point something out here. With this particular filter, I will get the right answer, which is 110, which does look like the summation of these five numbers. However, there is a small problem with this formula, or there is a small improvement I can do with this formula. Now, if I change the filter in this particular data set, the subtotal function, the summation will no longer properly work in some cases, because I'm only summing from row 6 to row 21, where in fact, my entire data set goes from row 2 to row 25. So if I want the subtotal function to work properly, as I change the filters over and over, instead of choosing the range D6 through D21, I should do D2 through D25 which is the entire data set. In this particular filter, VJ's week four expenditures, I will still get the same answer, 110. But if I were to, let's say, go from VJ to Oscar, then now I still have the right figures. And if I remove all the filters, my subtotal will still work.
Now let's go back to this filter. There's one more thing that I'd like to show you. It's the copy paste. If you have a filtered data set, what happens when you copy it and paste it somewhere else? In earlier version of Excel, if you copy a filtered range and try to paste it, it would actually show you the invisible cells as well. But in the last few versions of Excel, they changed this, so things work really fine. If I get these two transactions and copy them, and then I paste them here, as you can see, the copied block looks like two separate things. And then I paste it, I actually get a single data set, which is good. When you're copying, pasting something, filter, one thing to watch out for is not to paste what's copied to a filtered row. Here's what happens if I try to paste this into uh, this area. Now, I had copied two rows, but it looks like it's only pasting one. It's actually pasting the second row as well, but it's pasting it to row four, which is not visible. So the moral of the story here is if you copy a filtered data set, then paste it into a row or into another worksheet where there are no invisible cells. So that concludes our discussion with the filtering function.